Hello everyone, I am Alex James from EDI Support LLC. Uh, in this video, I am going to talk about Boomi EDI external validation best practices. As we all know, EDI documents are structured document formats that follow standard rules and guidelines and the specifications. Despite our best efforts, it's possible that we receive erroneous documents from the trading partner or we ourselves create or generate incorrect EDA documents. So it's very essential that uh, we must have a robust process in place so that all these invalid documents, either inbound from trading partner or the ones that we generate, are identified and appropriate remediation measures can be taken. Uh, yeah, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, around nine boom EDA validation best practices to supercharge your external EDA process flows. So before uh, getting into the best practices, I would like to set some context before uh, uh, diving deep into these uh, tips. So I've got uh, both best practices for both inbound EDA external validation as well as for outbound documents that we generated and sent out the door to the trading partner. To understand the inbound validation better let me show you a process okay so this is a fictitious process with a trading partner start shape and it has got three paths a uh, document path but any document that is received from the trading partner when it is found to be valid or when it is found when it is accepted then the documents would flow through the documents path for subsequent processing. And we got an acknowledgements path when um, an acknowledgement is opted for and an acknowledgement is enabled. Acknowledgements such as 997 is enabled. The 997s would be sent down to the acknowledgements path and then can be forwarded to the trading partner for the inbound document. And uh, this is an errors path where uh, a document which is rejected because of validation errors uh, would be sent down through this errors path and uh, we can attach shapes, required shapes to process the error document. Can be, we can either terminate the execution with an exception shape or can send out an email or it, the document or it, the flow can be passed on to an error handler. So there are different ways to handle error documents so these three parts it's very the understanding these three different parts is very crucial in uh, understanding the best practices let me start with the first best practice inbound eda validation is turned on only when functional acknowledgement options is set to either acknowledge functional groups or acknowledge transaction set so the eda validation is not turned on or it is off when the uh, func functional acknowledgement options is set to do not acknowledge. So it's uh, the best practice is to ensure that you enable the functional acknowledgement even if the trading partner is not expecting a 997 in return. So as I stated earlier, do not acknowledge would turn off EDI validation. Okay, so let me uh, so I'm, there are two types of validations one is validations for interchange control errors when i mean interchange control errors it is about uh, errors because of invalid control numbers or mismatched counts and uh, when an external document when an inbound external document which has got interchange control errors the inbound external processor would identify them as an error document and would send the such interchange control errors document. A document with interchange control errors would be sent down to error path. And the second type of error is the syntax error. A syntax error are errors where the EDA document has missing or misplaced segments or conditional data element missing. So such the documents, inbound EDA documents are categorized as accepted with errors. 
and would be some sent down to the document path. Please note, a document with validation syntax errors would not be sent down to the errors path, but to the document path. So what should we do with such inbound documents, which are which has an in which has got an invalid syntax uh, though they are sent to the uh, document path we can still restrict them from processing further using this uh, document property called is valid message document property so you can introduce a decision shape in the document path and uh, use this document property is valid message if the is valid message is true then it is a document which is completely accepted without any syntax errors and you can uh, route the document or send the document for further processing. But in case if you don't want to process a document with syntax errors, the is invalid message document property would be uh, would, would have a value false and you can uh, process the document accordingly. So you can either stop the document from further processing or it, you can attach an exception shape to the process to terminate the execution or the document can be routed to an error handler to be uh, to be uh, for necessary uh, reporting purposes and uh, the other important thing that we need to know is these validations for syntax errors is performed against eda profiles so the eda profiles in um, a document types right so in the trading partner component we got this document types and these document types are the places where we would configure the eda profiles and the inbound external processor would reference these eda profiles to see if the inbound eda document is valid or not so the other best practice you need to understand is is to create eda profiles very specific to that partner so that we can tailor the validation per partner in case if you have a, a, an EDI profile that would have imported all the segments that is possible in an EDI specification and then if or if you have a very generic EDI profile that is being referenced across multiple partners then it is possible that that can be uh, unexpected EDA validation errors. To avoid that, it is always better that you import only the required EDA segments that are applicable for that partner and reference them in the registered document type so that we don't see unexpected errors. The next important best practice is the validate qualifier. So the validate qualifier is an optional validation which can be turned on or off when registering document types. So a qualifier is a uh, is an code that is present in the EDA document. So for example, we have got multiple uh, reference segments and each reference segment is uniquely identified by the qualifier. For example, you got the vendor number, which is identified by the VN qualifier. So uh, you got uh, a, a dropship or an uh, standalone orders identified by this SA or DR qualifiers, right? So these are the qualifiers. There are a lot of qualifiers that are present in the EDA document. And most of these qualifiers are already defined in the specification. There is any non-standard qualifier that comes in the EDA document. And when this validate qualifier is turned on, then that document would be identified as a document with errors, which is part of the syntax validation. So any document, when it is, uh, when the evaluated qualifier is turned on and if it has got a non-standard qualifier coming in then the document would still be sent to the document path but it would be marked as accepted with errors so uh, as i stated earlier so the eda profile plays a very important role because the both the inbound and the outbound external validator on the processor boomi processor identifies or validates based on the standard qualifies that is imported into the EDA profile. So if in case if you would like to have a non-standard code also to be accepted then you have to add that qualifier into the EDA profile. Uh, so the next uh, best practice is on the 997. 
So as we all know, for every outbound document that is sent out, the partner sends returns in 997. Uh, so the 997 can be an accept or a reject 997. So though uh, the, okay, I'll show you here. So though uh, you have an option to filter the function acknowledgements, I'll show you here. So though there is an option to filter function acknowledgements here, so though you have an option to filter function acknowledgements, it's it's better that we disable this so that the document would flow through the document path. If we enable this, the document, the 997, inbound 997, would be stopped right at the start sheet. When we disable this, the document would flow through the document path and it gives us an opportunity or we can build a logic to inspect the AK5 or the AK9 segment to see if it is accept or reject 997. If it's a reject 997, then you can stop the execution or terminate the execution with an exception shape or pass the uh, information to an error handler to be reported. So the next uh, best practices are on the outbound document validation. So far we spoke, I spoke about the inbound document validation where how the inbound external processes both interchange control errors and the syntax errors and i also told you how the eda profile plays a very important role in performing validation for syntax errors uh, using the eda profile referenced in the document type section in the in the trading partner profile similarly for the outbound document so for an, any outbound eda document is generated uh, other map shape. So usually we have an accounting system which generates an 856 or an 810 and that uh, the accounting system would generate an XML or a JSON or a flat file which we then translate into EDI and send out the tour to the trading partner. So it's very important that uh, you ensure that the outbound document that is outbound EDI document that is sent out is validated and uh, a valid EDA document is sent out. To ensure that the uh, valid EDA document is sent out, the uh, outbound validation has to be turned on at two places. One is on this. So you got this validate outbound transaction sets. When a validate outbound transaction sets is enabled, so the outbound EDA process, the outbound, when the document is sent out the trading partnership, the uh, trading partner uh, processor, the trading partnership would validate the outbound document against this EDA profile that you have referenced in the registered document types and would uh, send the document out or it would send, if it's a valid document, if, it's, if the EDA document that came out of the map shape has all the required values and if it passes the validation, then it would be sent to the partner. But if it's identified to have a problem with syntax errors, then the document would sent down the error path. And uh, once the document is sent out the error path, you can take uh, necessary actions. So there are two important uh, document properties here because once a document is identified to be passed on to the error path, uh, it's important that uh, we know what is the uh, exception, what is the error message, why the document was rejected instead of sending to the trading partner, right? So you got two properties. One is outbound validation status and outbound validation report. So you can reference these uh, uh, document properties and include them in the exception shape or in your email to be sent to the uh, respective of intended recipients or to your, or to your error handler or, or you can mail uh, whatever the regular error handling process, error handling mechanism that you have, right? So use these two document properties, outbound validation status and outbound validation report. Capture these validation errors and uh, uh, get to know what why the document has failed. So look into that error exceptions. So once this document is stopped from sending to the partner and reported to the uh, in-house EDA team, right? So you have a chance now to look into those exceptions and correct the document.
and then can reprocess the document to be sent to the partner. So it's very important that uh, this option is turned on so that uh, an error document is not sent to the partner because a partner, when they receive this document, they do a validation and they send a write back nine and seven, which is not a cool thing, right? So partner wants us to comply and they don't want us to have send us a, uh, it, uh, an error document to them. So have this outbound document validation uh, enabled and send clean proper documents to the partner so uh, hope this uh, video has given you an understanding or has helped you and to an extent on what could be the best practices for boom eda x2 validation and uh, at eda support llc we have helped a lot of customers uh, migrate from their existing legacy EDA infrastructure or from managed DTA services provided to Boomi. And we've also been helping a lot of customers uh, on the new Boomi EDA implementation. Reach out to us if you need any assistance in implementation. Uh, and we are, we'll, we are very happy, we'll be more happy to assist you. Thank you.